Hey, 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 kids. Today we're going to look at standard 6.1.1, 6.2.1, and our objectives are by the end of the lesson, we will all be able to subtract integers using one of three methods. All right, you just pick your favorite method, whichever one makes more sense to you. It could be using a number line. It could also be adding the opposite, which I think is probably the best method. Keep change opposite. Or you could even use integer tiles. All right, let's move on. How might we use these in real life? Well... That could be very simply explained by a simple example of a shark. A shark is swimming 54 feet below sea level. So what would be the integer that would represent that? That's correct. Negative 54. All right. And it dives down another 19 feet. So that would be like subtracting 19. To attack a giant squid, what integer would describe its new position? Uh, Crazy, I would say. But by the end of class, you will all know how to solve this problem. All right. Subtracting integers using the number line. First of all, I want to introduce you all to my little friend, Suzy Q. Oh, Suzy Q. Honey, I love you. Suzy Q. We're going to use Suzy, and now for the number line example, whoa, get back here. The number line example, Suzy has to always face the positive numbers, at least to start off, because she's a very positive person, okay? And she's starting at zero, and we're going to call this zero again the origin. This is where she's going to start. Origins, just another word for a starting point, okay? The first thing we're going to look at is 3 minus 2. I know you all know how to solve this because we've been solving problems like this since we were in first grade, maybe even kindergarten. So, Susie's going to go forward three places. And then when we come to a minus sign, that tells her to change directions. That's what the minus sign tells us. Okay, so I'm going to say, hey Susie, why don't you flip, and she flips just like that. Does anybody know what kind of transformation this is? That's right, it's a reflection. So we had a reflection there, or a flip. So anyway, she flips, and then the 2 over here tells us again to take two more steps. Alright, so the minus sign tells us to turn or flip, and then the 2 just tells us to walk forward two steps, because it's a positive 2. All right, let's start her over again, and we know Susie, she's always positive, so we're going to change her back, facing all those positive numbers. Looking at this second example, what does the negative 2 tell Susie to do? That's right, it tells her to walk backwards. So she's going to take two steps backwards. One, two. We're at negative 2 right now. What does the minus sign tell us? The minus sign... Yes, it tells her to flip or turn the opposite direction. Okay, so we flip around. And now the 5, it's a positive 5, so she's going to walk forward 5 steps. 1, 2, whoa, Susie, get back here, girl. Okay, one moment. Okay, 3, 4, 5. There we go. All right. So when we have negative 2 minus 5, we actually get negative 7 as our answer. Go ahead and use your own number line and try to do this next problem, 4 minus negative 6. Always remember to start by facing the positive numbers. All right. And we're going to go ahead and lock those in place so she doesn't change it up again. If you did it correctly, the first thing you did was you went four steps forward. Then you had to actually flip into the other direction. So when you flip in the other direction, the negative six tells her to walk backwards, though, six. So she's actually going to be going backward this way. One, two, 
three, and we'd have to go back four, five, six, three more. So the answer is actually a positive 10. Now, some of you that may have helped out. Others, it might be a little confusing. So we have a better method, or what is personally my favorite method, and that is let's try keep change opposite or KCO. All right. So what that means is you want to keep change opposite, and I'll kind of explain here. But the first number we keep, we keep it the same. The second, or the sign here, we're going to change. This is only for subtraction, only for subtraction of integers. Keep change, and then this is going to be the opposite. So what's the opposite of negative 3? That's right, it's positive 3. Negative 2 plus positive 3. And we could go back to our old method of doing things with Joe on the number line, because now we're adding. All right, face her in the positive direction, but negative 2 tells her to walk backwards. So we walk backwards, 1, 2, and then a positive 3 tells her to walk forward 3, 1, 2, 3. And you get the answer, 1. So negative 2 plus 3. We just changed it into a, an addition problem. Okay? If we look back to 3 minus 2, which we know the answer there is 1, we could keep change opposite. And now we have 3 plus negative 2 is 1. They're both the same answer. And we just changed the minus sign into a plus sign and changed the number or integer that follows that sign into its opposite. You go ahead and try this one. Negative 5 minus 1. Pause the screen. And then push record when, when you're ready, or play when you're ready. All right, you should have gotten keep change opposite. Negative 5 plus negative 1 is negative 6. Here are some more to practice with. Go ahead and practice using keep change opposite. Pause the screen, and then we'll check them here in a little bit. All right. And here are your answers. How did you do? Did you remember to always change the minus sign to a plus sign and the number or integer that follows behind it to its opposite? That'll help you out. Let's move on to the next page. This is the other method you can use. Sometimes I find it to be confusing, uh, but other students or people may actually prefer or like this method. Okay, if we had negative 3, we would represent that with three negatives. And then we know our minus sign, well, when we were younger, like first grade or even second grade, you might have called it take away. So that means we're going to take away two negatives. Well, here we go. Take away one, take away two. My answer is negative one. That's what I have left, negative one. If we tried to test it out using keep change opposite, we would change this and change that to the opposite. Negative 3 plus 2 is equal to negative 1. Let's try one more. Okay, because they can be confusing sometimes. If you have to take away negatives, but there aren't any negatives. So we have four positives here. 1, 2, 3, and 4. Now, we just said this means take away, but I don't have negative 2 to take away. So what am I going to do? I have to add in zero pairs. And this is where sometimes people find it confusing, uh, but you can use whichever method you prefer. Remember, if we add a positive and a negative, this is kind of like a zero pair. So I'm going to add another one. I'm not really adding anything to this problem because when you have one positive and one negative, they actually like cancel each other out. So the zero pair is not affecting the actual or what it's equal to at all. But now, I can actually take away those negative two, or two negatives. Boom, one gone, two gone. What do I have left? That's right, a positive six. So that's how you could use it using integer tiles. And again, if we checked our work, keep change 
opposite, and we would have 4 plus 2 equals 6. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope that helped you out. Um, so, if you want, you can try practicing on my website. This time, we're not adding, though. We're subtracting integers. Go to JBZ Web. Check out math, and under the, the, the tab where it says integers and basic algebra, you'll find some great practice games with specific skills. Have a great day.